So Naveen, um, looking from the other side of the grass, which I think is a lot more greener as an VCN investor, looking at the current crop entrepreneurs, so I, I keep asking this question to everybody uh, from, from the same um, era where, where it looks so, so far back when you and others you know, have made it really big as, an, as entrepreneurs. Now that you're investing with entrepreneurs, obviously the fundamental question that comes out is, what are the hottest segments and industries we're investing and how do you see the trends emerging? Got it. So I think first of all, this is one of the most exciting times to be an entrepreneur and to be starting companies. Every decade, industry giants have been created starting from the 1970s when the world was moving from mainframe to mini computers and in the 80s it moved to the PC and then it was the internet era. Today we are not seeing like one such shift in the technology industry, we are seeing four. First, it's all about mobile. Mobile is the new device, it's the new client, it's not the PC. The back end is all moving from server to a cloud infrastructure and the enterprise software apps are moving to software as a service. Third, the way people discover things is social. And fourth, is this big data movement where people are collecting large sums of data and are able to provide insights to businesses rather than just transforming business processes. So when you have four inflection points, mobile, cloud, social and big data, it's a really exciting time to be an entrepreneur. I couldn't agree with you more. When you look at your investments, uh, are there some you know, um, general examples you can share as to why you think you're focusing on this? Apart from the trends in the industry, uh, are the trades that you pick up from entrepreneurs? Sure, sure. So I think uh, if you look at the IT industry as an example, and let me just focus on that, it's a $2 trillion industry. And we believe this era is the post-PC and the post-server era. So if I, let me pick some examples, right? Like why is mobile, which I talked about, an interesting area? There are three sets of opportunities. The first is around consumers. In the mobile consumer ecosystem, next generation producti productivity apps are being created where when you have an always on device with context, it knows your location, what are the things you can do? Mobile commerce with companies like Fab is another example of bringing a storefront to your phone which is always on and bringing it to a tablet. Similarly, new kinds of marketplaces in mobile are being created. We are investors in a company called Poshmark, which is a discovery-based fashion marketplace. Similarly, we are investors in a company called Lyft, which enables ride-sharing based on where you are located. The second set of opportunities are for developers. Developers know how to program in Java, they know how to program in .NET. Today, they have to build applications for a mobile world. You have iOS for the Apple platform, you have Android, but then you have thousands of different kinds of phones that are coming out on Android. You have Microsoft Windows, and then you have Blackberry. So can there be a company, like we're an investor in a company called Appcelerator, which essentially provides a platform for developers where they can program in JavaScript, and native applications come out, which are cloud-connected, for every phone platform. It increases the productivity of developers. People don't need to retool their skills. Similarly, in the mobile enterprise, new companies are being created. Some of the examples are like ServiceMax. That's one of our companies, which is providing a field service automation company, where the field service people, when you see people at UPS carrying these devices, which are monolithic, they're heavy, can all get replaced by smartphones and tablets. IT is a big issue. How do you manage these devices? How do you make them secure? So we were investors in a company called Zenprice, which had gotten acquired by Citrix. So those are the opportunities on mobile. If I pull back and say, where are the opportunities in the cloud? They are both at the infrastructure level and also at the applications level. And the application level is called SaaS, or software as a service. One of our companies went public today, Marketo. We have like 10 or 12 other investments in the SaaS area. Similarly, in the cloud infrastructure level, we are big believers in hybrid clouds. Hybrid clouds make the enterprise data center 
can seamlessly connect to public cloud so that for agility, you can just burst to the cloud. We were investors in a company called StoreSimple that Microsoft recently acquired, which makes public cloud storage just look like your local storage. Similarly, in social, there's a lot of companies which are socializing the enterprise. In big data, it's all about insights. We are investors in a leading Hadoop distribution platform company, MapArt. So we see opportunities all over the place today, if you will look at it. So I come back to the fundamental question because Thai does fostering entrepreneurship. Nobody does it better than Thai. The question again is for entrepreneurs when they hear these success stories and people you know, like yourself, the challenge is, you know, how do they come up to the level where they are talking to people like you and taking your interest in the product or services? Because there's always this curve that they have to cross from a professional to an entrepreneur. And that's the challenge for them. Do they take, at what point in their uh, journey do they come to you, people like you to seek advice and seek investment? So I think uh, my advice to the entrepreneurs is approach the VCs early on build relationships with them and never be in the pitch mode because then you're getting evaluated on just what your current idea is. It's always good to make sure you have the chemistry first with the VC and you can look at them as a co-partner in your journey because this is a long-term business. Building companies takes time, it requires effort. It's like running a marathon, not a sprint. So if you can have alignment on values and chemistry, then you set the fundamental or the foundation or the need, and then you can build things from there. On a lighter note, when entrepreneurs uh, run their companies, always there's this competition to make it a big hit. So when VCs are running their funds, uh, how intense is it to be on the Midas list and what does it keep you coming on the Midas list again and again? I think uh, this business, like basically entrepreneurs make us and entrepreneurs need to remember they are made by timing and luck. It's a serendipity based business. It is competitive but I think if you do well by the entrepreneurs, they make us look good and you appear on the Midas list again and again. So it's all about people who are attending Tycon this year. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We appreciate that. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you.